Hello, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carlos Vicente. I'm the director of the Ethnological Museum and Cultures of the World. First of all, I would like to thank you for having accepted our invitation to participate in today's and tomorrow's debates. I would also like to thank the EUROM, which is uh, represented by Jordi Guichet here, sitting next to me, because they've been working together with us for three and a half years. And I especially want to congratulate and thank Celeste Muñoz, who is here with us. To my left, Fernanda Sanucci, uh, who I think is also present in the room from communication, and Ricard, because they are the ones who have been working on the organization of the program and thanks to all the members of the team of the museum who actively participate in order for us welcome in order for us to be here celebrating the third edition third international seminar i think this meeting is being consolidated and every year we've been celebrating these seminars for the past three years, and this is because we are dealing with very important and necessary aspects which talk about our past and talk also about the role played by museums as such. And I think it's also important for all the members of society as a whole. In this third international seminar, we are not as close to explicit subjects that we deal with political and legal aspects related to resolution and the debt that we all had, post-colonial debt. And this time we wanted to talk about experiences which are happening all over the world, which can be good examples of how we can develop a specific task in a different way compared to previous ways or previous aspects. In this museum, we've been working with this objective and maybe slower than we wish, uh, visitors and those who work inside the museum. But recently, we've been able to actively participate in this project that will be explained later, the Traficants Research Project. And we've also been able to create some relationships and bonds from the Department of Collections with the Benin Digital Project and the Mac Museum of Hamburg and of course, what they are doing is an inventory of the different pieces coming from Benin that were exfoliated and scavenged from their origin places. And also another international collaboration return, cultural heritage, uh, which comes from the Aboriginal Studies Museum. And as you know, unless you know it, let me explain it to you. It it seems that this collection has one of the most important collections in Europe, just by coincidence. Some years ago, we organized an exhibition about this subject, and they quickly contacted us, and we are mainly giving them information about the Australian heritage outside of the country. From an internal perspective, in our museum, we are very much involved in revisiting the different documents and the fund funds from Guinea, because we think that this is one of the funds that can uh, be revisited from a critical perspective and non-Eurocentric perspective. Also, at the same time, we are preparing a protocol together with the ICOM and the International Congress of Museums about the withdrawal of human remains from the permanent exhibition. There are some, not many, but there are some, and therefore we want to withdraw those materials and we want to do it by following a public protocol, uh, which will be explaining how this process is going to take place. All these initiatives that we are trying to develop and these seminars help us to continue and to keep learning and improving. And therefore, I think that it's very interesting that we can continue to organize seminars such as this one. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. 
I look forward to listening to comments and questions and now give the floor to Mr. Jordi Guichet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. I'm very happy to be here with all of you once again, and together with the colleagues from the Ethnological Museum of Barcelona, together with Carla Celeste as a commissioner and organizer, scientific organizer of the seminar, Ricard and Fernanda, Silvia Pala, and the interpreting team for their excellent task. And their collaboration in many of the things that we do from the EUROM. And I think this is a permanent and constant source of work. It's a bit uncomfortable to talk about colonizing, decolonizing the collections and colonial memory, public space, things that we've been dealing with here and also in other seminars and conferences. In this sense, 15 days ago, this new law of historic memory of the Spanish state with the secretary of a Spanish state decided, and this is just one additional step, it's not a huge success, but at least part of the text and also in the international meetings within the framework of the Spanish presidency, we have a very interesting round table with participants coming from the international the hands of the memory of a slavery, exchanging collections among museums, and all these memories which are uncomfortable for the public uh, memories of our countries, not for researchers, of course, uh, people who are doing an excellent work. I would also like to thank Fundacio Solidaridad, together with the EUROM, we collaborate with CEL and the Observatory of Daily Life that we've been working on these different subjects. And let me highlight that uh, this is more or less part of our agenda. I'm very skeptic. Those of you who know me, I'm becoming more and more skeptical as far as the legislation of the memorial. Now we can already say that we are always comparing in the media that uh, in Spain the situation was compared to Cambodia, etc. But we can say that in Spain with the memory laws and state laws, this is the country with more legal regulations and the country that most executes them. And this is a uh, reason why, and I'm saying that because we've been reflecting on this, and it's true, we have been reflecting from an expert point of view and also people who have been behind this legislation, promoting this legislation. There are many entities, some of them are present here, that have also introduced all the subjects related to colonial memory in the new law of democratic memory in the Spanish state. Not so many the Catalan one, but it's still being debated. It will be quite useless, magnificent text, but we all have magnificent text as part of our libraries, but this is not executed. There is no public policy, no budget to develop all these issues, which are somehow uncomfortable and require a will from a budgetary perspective in order to invest and develop all these policies. In any case, this is another step forward. I don't want to be very negative or but the truth is that we have many texts and many laws and the international situation following the different crises happening in Europe and the southeast of Europe, Ukraine, of course, and now Palestine and the Gaza Strip, but also within our malaise, we don't take a step forward and we are not bold enough to apply these resolutions that are just a legislative text but we hope that there are further possibilities to develop. Without further ado, from a more local perspective, I think that it's important to continue this collaboration between this European Observatory of Memory and the Foundation Solidaridad of the University of Barcelona, together with the Municipality of Barcelona, Carlas, and the people of the Ethnological Museum here. The task starts at least the reflections will start today. It's very important to have a comparative model of comparative memories 
and legislations in other states. And this is more or less uh, what the commissioner of this, the curator of these uh, conferences will explain. Uh, knowing before acting. This is a very typical issue and typical problem, but many of us first try to learn from this history and policies of memory, all these processes of museography, and let's think about how to do it. What can we do with human remains? What can we do and what other museums are doing when they apply these contemporary policies and they related to a forgotten past? Uh, a past that has to be repaired. I don't know how this is going to be repaired. Besides the legislation, which is quite symbolic, the best way to repair the past is how do we show to contemporary society that thanks uh, to many has many values, although many of these values are in crisis. Well, that's all I wanted to say. Congratulations, and I hope these debates are very fruitful. Uh, I now give the floor to Sel, who will explain the content of both days. Well, thank you very much, Jordi. I want to be a bit more optimistic, and I hope that today's and tomorrow's seminars will offer us tools and reflection in order to evaluate all these problems. And in fact, this is what we have been doing in the most recent editions, and this is the third one. So first of all, I would like to thank the welcome by the Ethnological Museum, uh, this seminar and previous museums which have allowed us to provide continuity to this seminar called Repairing the Past, the Foundation Solidarity Ope, the European Observatory of Memories, Ricard, Fernanda, and all the technical uh, team of the Ethnological Museum, which is also actively participating in all the round tables. Let me tell you about the content of our sessions today and tomorrow. Today's session, today, is dedicated to the experiences through this heritage in conflict at the Ethnological Museum here through this project called Traficants that Alberto Lopez Vargados, who is the main researcher, will explain, will frame the content of this project, the objectives, and this is a project that will carry out a project of traceability of many collections of museums in Catalonia, but working mainly from the ethnological museums. And then some of the first results of this project, which is the presentation of these intercultural dialogue workshops. And out of this experience, we will listen to Sarai Martin, Luis Ramoneda, Josef El Maimuni, and Montserrat Anguiano moderated by Laida Memba. Tomorrow's session, let me tell you about a bit of changes, important changes that we had suffered due to causes, unexpected causes, uh, with very little room for maneuver. So we had to gather the round table that was conceived to provide voice to representatives of different uh, museums of Terburen, Museum America de Madrid, and Museum of Cologne. And finally, this session will be hybrid because some of the speakers have not been able to come. And Jackie Maniaki cannot participate representing the Museum of Terburen. And Bart Aubrey will do it tomorrow online. Nanette Snoeb will not be able to join due to an unexpected problems and Clement Nameka also had a problem and he will be connecting online. So the session will be hybrid and all the speakers that had to participate in the round table, uh, even if we had to introduce some changes, uh, they will be able to develop uh, tomorrow's session that was conceived about the experiences from different institutions, what has happened uh, with this institution, what has happened on a more international compar comparable perspective with the local context, and to be able to complete today's session, which is much more centered in the Ethnological Museum and this project called Traficants. Mm -hmm.